Hey everyone, so you all are looking at the next accessory I'm going to be installing on my truck, and I'm going to put these on myself. These are the Bilstein 5100 series shocks. I think this is the universal Bilstein picture they put on all of them. I'm not going to do a full installation video on these shocks simply because there's hundreds of them out there on the internet already. So what I plan on doing is seeing how they perform on this truck. Now technically, the 5100 series isn't the right shock for the F450, but one of the reasons for that is there's so many companies, including Bilstein, Rancho, Procomp, that don't realize that the F450 pickup is essentially the same thing as an F350 pickup dually. So no one really makes a specific shock for this truck. And if you go to Bilstein's website, they don't actually have something specifically for this. There are a few websites like sdtrucksprings.com that sell the 4600 series and claim that it is an appropriate shock for this truck. But if you look at the specifications of that shock and this one, they're for the exact same application. So instead of going with the 4600 series, I went with the 5100 series. They say the only difference between the two series is that the 5100 is made for lifted trucks, even though these specific shocks that I order are designed for a truck with a zero through one inch lift kit on it, whereas the 4600 shocks are essentially a stock replacement shock. Anyways, I'm gonna unbox these real quick, let you see what they look like. I'm gonna throw them on and do some test drives to see if they really improve the ride for me, especially especially considering the fact that I have the Celastic shackles on my truck as well. So now that I have them all unboxed, you can see they have the rubber boot that protects the piston that goes in. They have a nice zinc coated finish on the outside. These are high pressure monotube shocks. They look really nice. These are for the rear and these are for the front. The way you can tell on the Super Duty is you'll have this uh, stem that is just going to go through the top mount and then you put these bushings and bolts into place to hold it on. And of course these go in the rear. So the secret to installing these is to mount the top one in and then cut the cable and as this is decompressing down, slide the bottom bolt into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these things on and see how they perform. So hey everyone, I am done installing these Bilstein 5100 series shocks on my F450 and I haven't driven around with it yet, but I'm anticipating it's gonna be marginal improvement. I can't really see shocks making a dramatic difference in ride. Even though when you read the reviews and you go to the forums, people claim that you know swapping shocks out make a night and day difference. I did that on my old 250, and the only shocks that really made a difference were the Fox racing shocks that I put on, and they didn't make a good difference. For me, they made the ride a little bit harsher. So these Bilstein are supposed to be a more comfortable riding shock and definitely a monotube high pressure shock. It was a bit of a chore to actually get the top of this into the eyelet. I know I probably should have raised the, the front of the truck off the ground slightly so it would have given me a little bit, I guess I would have had to press as hard down on this piston to get it inside of there. However, I was able to get it done. Um, it only took maybe about 10 to 15 minutes per side to replace the entire shock. Um, it definitely helps to have some ratcheting uh, wrenches to get these top bolts off of the factory shock and to put the new one on because it's kind of a tight fit back in there. But here's the front passenger side. Here's the front driver side and the rear shocks. There's one right there and on the other side of the axle, you can kind of see part of the other one right there. Those in conjunction with the Celastic Springs should give me an improved ride. But again, I'm not looking for night and day difference out of shocks. I think that these shocks will improve it slightly. Even a little bit of a noticeable improvement in ride is, is something. So these Bilstein 5100 series shock run anywhere between 70 and 100 bucks, depending on where you buy them from. And of course, sometimes taxes and shipping can make that price go up or down slightly. Now I want to point something out here. I've taken the factory shock, the Rancho shock that's on my truck, and I've compressed it completely. When it's uncompressed, it's supposed to look something like that. Now, a lot of people will claim that because this shock is not decompressing or rebounding quickly, that it's a bad shock. And a lot of people have pulled these off of brand new trucks just to see them do the same thing. Now, though this isn't what I would consider a super high quality shock, just because it rebounds slowly doesn't mean that there's inherently anything wrong with the shock. A shock absorber is to do exactly what it sounds like. It absorbs shock, whether it's in a rebound position or a compression position. So 
the whole point is that it doesn't allow the spring just to freely bounce up and down, that it controls that travel and in turn creates a smoother ride inside of the cab and doesn't transfer too much shock to the passengers in the truck or the chassis of the truck itself. The shock absorber itself from Ford may have been dialed in. Rancho may have taken a Ford specification on how they want the shock to perform and simply created a shock specifically for them. Now, a few reasons why I don't very much care for the quality of these shocks is because, first of all, my truck has under 20,000 miles. It's rusting on both ends. They painted over the actual rubber bushing and the shock itself, even though Rancho claims they make this shock, if you call Rancho or Tenneco Corporation and you ask them, they have a whole floor dedicated to people who work with OEMs to make shocks. But these shocks are specifically branded Motorcraft, which is a Ford company. It also says that it is a gas pressurized unit, but what it doesn't say is that it's a high pressure gas unit. So if you look at a Bilstein, or a higher end Rancho shock that is a monotube shock, it's going to have a much higher pressure gas setup that allows it to rebound quicker. So it's kind of curious to me why Ford would have had Rancho dial the shocks in the way they did, why it's labeled as Motorcraft, and why it rebounds so slowly or why they chose to do it that way. And just so you know, Rancho produces a very, very similar shock for General Motors trucks that have the Z71 package on it. The only truck that currently has Bilstein as an option is Ram trucks, and you get the Bilstein 4600 series uh, shock directly on a Ram truck if you get the correct package. And that shock is actually labeled as a Bilstein produced shock as opposed to a Motorcraft shock or an AC Delco shock. So just wanted to let you all know this. I'm going to take the truck out for a drive here shortly, and I'll give you my feedback on how I think the truck rides with the new shocks. So now that I'm on the road, I'm going to be going over a specifically rough patch of road, not with potholes and not because the road's just bad itself, but because it's a concrete road with quite a few expansion joints. Now, it starts here. And I just want to see what the difference is in ride quality over a road like this. Now, I can tell that the back end is significantly smoother, and I would probably chalk that up to being the Celastics along with the Bilsteins. Up front, it feels marginally better. I'm not going to say that it's a dramatic improvement, but it is a noticeable improvement. And one of the reasons for that is... The shocks that come on the truck, and this really goes for most factory setups, whether it's a Ram, whether it's a GM, or whether it's a Ford. Ram with the Bilstein upgrade shouldn't really be affected by this, but pretty much all the other trucks are gonna have a shock that's not necessarily gonna function as great as it could. So on this particular road, it is taking some of the edge out of the bumps, and it feels marginally smoother. So I'm not going to say that they have no effect because they do feel a little bit better. So I'm pretty impressed with them so far. I don't think that it is a mind-blowing difference. I don't think it's something that's going to dramatically improve the ride of the vehicle. But I believe on longer road trips or on longer rough roads or when you're driving down extended roads that have a lot of potholes, a lot of uneven surfaces, just a rough road in general, they're gonna perform a lot better than your factory shock. I've always been someone to upgrade the shock shortly after purchasing a truck. On this truck, I decided to hold off a little bit longer because I really wanted to see what the factory shocks would do if I didn't change them out right away. I don't think that you need to be in any huge rush to change out your shocks. I think that the factory shocks perform fair, and I think that they actually perform the way that they're designed to perform, even though they gradually may lose their ability to really absorb shocks well uh, when you're going down certain types of roads. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative for you. Um, if I wanted to rate this on a difficulty scale, I'd probably say it's maybe a two or three. The hardest part, of course, is compressing the shock and getting it into place. And there are little tips and tricks that you can find out there to help you do it. Um, I muscled them into place and it worked fine for me. But when you're done doing it, you are pretty winded by the time you've you know, wrapped everything up and you've compressed four shocks by hand to get them into the brackets. Anyways, if you like my videos, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.